He went from America's athlete to America's sweetheart. Team USA's Adam Rippon has transcended Olympic glory. Now a top competitor on Dancing with the Stars and a hero to the LGBTQ community. Tonight he opens up about his surreal journey to Nightline special correspondent Gus Kenworthy. From those awesome moves at the Olympic Games to his front and center role in Stars on Ice. And now, his high scoring steps on Dancing with the Stars. Even if you wanted to, you can't escape Adam Rapon. And as it turns out, neither can I. Adam's skills on the ice got him a bronze medal at the Winter Olympics and massive attention from millions, including Reese Witherspoon and Britney Spears, both tweeting their fandom. I wasn't expecting um, the response that I got while I was there. And I think every time I got on my phone, it was like blowing up, like my Twitter would crash, my Instagram wouldn't open up. <laughs> Adam winning over America with his combination of grace, charm, and self-deprecating sass. Cool. Girl, I'm ready. What's taking you so long? I'm like a witch and you can't kill me. I keep coming back every year and every year I get better. When I went out and I was skating, I was super focused that I was gonna do my best so that people weren't like, oh, this is some trash kid who has a big mouth. Like, no, he's a serious athlete who has a big mouth and is trash. Adam boldly declaring himself America's sweetheart. You know, I want it to be about my amazing skating and um, being America's sweetheart. Here's the thing. Tell me. <laughs> I gave myself that title. I figured. I was thinking like, I was like, you know what, I'm, I feel in a very powerful place right now. I'm going to say that um, I'm America's sweetheart once and see what happens. I said it once in a press conference and then I did uh, something on the news and I could read on the, the screen underneath and it was like, America's sweetheart, Adam Rippon. And I was like... You arrived. Yeah. Right, right. Yes. Okay. But off the ice and away from the spotlight, I know him as my friend Adam, who walked next to me at opening ceremonies. That moment was special for the honor we both shared becoming one of the first openly gay male competitors in U.S. Olympic history. One of the things that we both have in common, besides being Olympians, is that in 2015 we both came out of the closet. What was the reaction that you received when that happened? So I think my coming out was a little bit more under the radar. I had little to no negative feedback or people writing to me saying, you know, nasty things. Um, basically the only, like, messages that I would get over and over were like, is this really necessary? Coming from a really small town and feeling like I didn't have many people to look up to as a young kid, I felt like it was necessary. You became a role model for the LGBTQ community. What does that mean to you? What my mom taught me when I was young, that it's important to treat others well. The way that you want people to treat you is the way you should treat other people. And not everybody responds to that and not everybody will give you the respect that you think that you deserve or you want, but it doesn't matter because you can teach them. If you show somebody a little bit of kindness, you can really change their whole world. Before Adam was the darling of the Winter Olympics, he had to overcome a lifetime of challenges to get to the sport's biggest stage. Born one of six children raised by a single mother, his first two attempts to make the games ended in disappointment. That entire month in Korea was crazy. It was something I had been wanting to do my entire life and that I failed to do two times before. So to actually be at the Olympics and have that moment was so incredible. At the games, Adam made news when he openly criticized the decision to have Vice President Mike Pence, who has supported anti-gay positions in the past, lead the U.S. delegation. If that current administration was watching this right now, what would you want to say to them? I would say that the young people of America are watching and are acting. There's a lot of talk in Korea about you having a sit down with Vice President Pence. Is that something that you have any desire to do? I think that if we aren't willing to listen to each other and have an open conversation, nothing will change and nothing will get done. On the flip side of that, the conversation, it's not for me. It's a conversation for that trans man or woman that can't even go to the right bathroom. It's a conversation for that trans man or woman that can't join the military. It's a conversation for the Muslim family that got broken up or had a mother, father, travel and then wasn't allowed back in. 
and it's an opportunity for them to have their stories told. Absolutely. I'm just using my platform to the best of my ability. When Olympians from the Winter Games visited the White House, some, like Adam and myself, chose not to meet with the president. If we see an administration that discriminates against trans members in the military or our own Muslim American citizens, that we need to speak up. Because at one point or another, like it's great that we can be having this interview right now as two out men, but there was a time not too long ago where this would be like too weird. Using his platform and his popularity to make a big statement. Olympic bronze medalist Adam Rippon. Now, nearly three months since the Olympics, Adam is still competing, but this time in LA, trading his triple Lutz for the tango and the cha-cha. On his first night on dancing, Adam blew the competition away. Eight. 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 Do you think you have an advantage being a figure skater? I feel like a lot of people say that you're already a dancer. Do you think that that's true or not true? Well, I think the only advantage I have is that I've been working with music my entire life. And choreography. Yes. Um, do I know any dance steps? No. And it was a harsh learning curve. And it's every day is a whole new experience. Okay. Since I taught him everything he knows on the ice, I thought I'd teach him a few dance moves too. I've never done it. This is like a first time. Okay. But you're gonna like jump on my back like a piggyback. And then put your legs out. And then I'm gonna like spin. And then when I say now, yeah. I'm gonna flip you into my arms and cradle you. Have so you tried like, this with anyone? No, not yet. Great. All right, you ready? Yeah. Safe. No. <laughs> wait. Oh, wait. I should flip my legs around. Yes, you flip your legs around. Okay. <laughs> you ready, America? Oh Wait, you didn't do it. I hope that your guys' rehearsing is going better than this. Are you breathing deeply? I'll try again. Okay. Try to catch me. I know. Go. <laughs> but you're not, you, have to like, you have to swing your body around. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll stick to the slopes. For Nightline, I'm Gus Kenworthy in Detroit. Oh, my God. Gus and Adam reunite next month, co-hosting New York's Trevor Project Gala to benefit at-risk LGBTQ youth.